You and I know that if you want anything, you must think about it, visualize it, and be proactive. There is no glass ceiling. That is entirely in your imagination. The glass ceiling is here, and you can smash through that, shatter that, if you want to. So you make your habits, and then your habits turn right around and make you, and the only thing that are holding you back are the wrong habits. Some of the most successful people we look at and admire and envy did not come from wealth. They didn't have a university education. Look at Tony Robbins, an incredibly wealthy, successful, idolized coach who came from nothing. Look at Oprah Winfrey, Alan Sugar, Chris Evans. So many people we look at did not go to university, didn't come from money. And today we have the advantage that if you can have an idea and monetize it, you can make it having never gone to university. So the secret to abundance is not a university education. In fact, I know many people who came out of university and can't get employed. It's not even coming from wealth. After all, all poor Getty's children came from wealth, but that didn't help them. In fact, it's true to say, it handicapped them. What helps you to acquire wealth is to have a wealth mindset. How do you have a wealth mindset? Well, think of something you want to monetize and you have to really believe in yourself. You see, if you think of James Dyson, he looked at a vacuum cleaner and he made it better than it was. There are people like the woman who founded Spanx who took shapewear and made it better than it already was. So, first of all, you have to have an idea. What is it in you? What could you monetize, create, make, invent, or simply improve. You have an idea, that's the starting one, but now you must have phenomenal confidence, incredible self-belief that you are going to make it. And then you have to have a work ethic. You have to put time and effort into your idea. So me, for example, I always wanted to be a therapist. I wanted to be the best therapist. And then I wanted to change the world of therapy to revolutionize it, to make it better. A bit like Dyson revolutionized a hairdryer. I wanted to revolutionize therapy. That was an idea. I had an idea. I had a belief that I could do it. I came across roadblocks, of course, and then I kept going. I did what I didn't want to do. I thought outside the box. I put a lot of work and effort and innovation into being something that I knew I could be, and I did it. And anyone can take that formula, have an idea, apply to that idea, tremendous self-belief, phenomenal self-confidence, think outside the box, don't take no for an answer, find people that can help you, that's very important. Who can help you? Who can mentor you? Who can you role model yourself on? And how much work are you prepared to do? Do you think Oprah Winfrey said, oh, have a show, why well, I got a show? There's a lot of work goes into having a show. Tony Robbins, huge amount of work goes into taking that show on the road, but you can do it. An idea is an idea, but when you commit that idea down into chunks, when you get other people on board, when you write it out as a plan, when you put up a vision board and say, I am successful, I am doing this, then you can do it. And so often you can just look at a product and think, I could make this better, I could reinvent it. That's what happens all the time in publishing because here's another thing, once upon a time, you wrote a book, you took it to a publisher, they went, oh, no thank you, and you were finished. Now you can self-publish and self-publishing is now very respected. So now you can have an idea to write a book, a man who can take it to Amazon, you can go to Create Space, you can self-publish, you can get people to fundraise your business. There are so many things that you can do. So please don't think, mm, my education holds me back, that may be a great advantage. Please don't think I haven't got experience, that can be a good thing. But let's look at the blocks that get in your way. What is getting in your way are your thoughts. There is no glass ceiling. That is entirely in your imagination. The glass ceiling is here and you can smash through that, shatter that, 
if you want to. But you have to really believe in yourself. If you are going to work for yourself and have your own startup like Airbnb, what a great idea. Guys that were sleeping on people's sofas created Airbnb. No university education was required. No experience was required. And yet they built a fantastic business. They had a thought. They put it into action, put a lot of work into it. Same thing with Uber, revolutionizing taxi cabs. It was an idea, and behind that idea was hard work, grit, persistence, but most of all the idea that, wow, I could revolutionize something as simple as a cab ride. So let's have a look at you. What are your beliefs? Here's the common ones. It's too difficult. It's too hard. It takes too much effort. Nobody will like it. I don't have experience. I didn't go to college. I haven't got money behind me. You see, if you pick some amazing people out there doing well, they had all of those reasons to fail, but they said it doesn't matter. I don't have money behind me, I'll crowdfund, I'll get a loan, I'll mortgage my house, I'll do something. I don't have a university education, it doesn't matter. That means you think outside the box. I don't have experience, you can get experience. So please, don't allow beliefs to hold you back. Beliefs hold you back, habits hold you back. The habit of thinking, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not experienced, I'm not old enough. When I was a therapist, people would say, but you're too young to be a therapist. You're too young to know all this stuff. I tell people now who say, but aren't I too old? I'm a retiree, surely I'm too old. You see, all of these beliefs are only real if you believe them. Age is not a barrier. Background is not a barrier. Even knowledge is not a barrier. Many people say, I have no idea what I'm doing. Richard Branson called his first company Virgin because he was selling audio cassettes. We would record them, send them back and get a refund. And he was so naive. He called his company Virgin because he was a virgin in business, but he learnt as he went along. He didn't have experience, but he had one thing that we can all have, phenomenal self-belief, determination, commitment, raw enthusiasm. Take all of those things and add to them a belief. Have a mantra, I can do this, I can make it. Write out every limiting belief you have right now. Take a pen, take some paper, write out, I didn't go to college. And then underneath, write out, hey, all the people I admire in the business world didn't go to college. I haven't got money behind me. That won't stop me. I haven't got experience. Write out, many people I admire had no experience, yet here they are doing phenomenal, amazing, incredible things, making money, making business, making success, acquiring wealth, training other people. If we look at Jamie Oliver, Gordon Ramsay, some of the most amazing chefs who started restaurants had little experience, but they had a passion for food and enthusiasm. So passion, enthusiasm, drive, commitment, the ability to work hard. If you combine those with extraordinary self-belief, which you can pour into yourself, wire into yourself, and fire into yourself, you can make it make your negative beliefs unfamiliar, shatter them, change them, get rid of them, put in their place better beliefs, and you can be incredibly successful. So grit is really a new buzzword, and what does it actually mean? Well, it means resilience. It means determination. It means having a bounce back factor. And we live in a world now where many of us have our own business, or we certainly want our own business. We want our own startup. We want to work for ourselves. And if you want to work for yourself, you better build your resilience, your determination, and your grit, because it will make everything easier, not just your career, your relationship, your relationship with yourself, even your health comes down to have you got resilience? Have you got determination? Can you bounce back. So let me take you through the five things that will grow your grit. And the first one is having that bounce back factor. You need to be like a big 
rubber ball to bounce back. Many of the most successful people you will ever come across were rejected, were fired, but they bounced back. They would say things like, hey, you can't keep me down. I'm coming back. I'll come back bigger, brighter, stronger, better than ever. So I've worked with many, many professional athletes and they don't always win, but they come back. They have this attitude, I'll come back next year. I didn't win, but I will win. You didn't like my product, I'll come back. If you watch Shark Tank or Dragon's Den, you'll see some people are voted off, humiliated, laughed off, but back they come, bigger and better than ever. So what is your bounce back factor like? When you get rejected, does it hurt? Are you wounded? Do you think that's it? Never again. I could never hear no again. I couldn't be rejected again. I couldn't be fired again. Or do you go, right, I'll show you. I'll learn something from that rejection. I will come back. You have to make a decision to bounce back. You see, we're very fragile inside. We have this belief rejection will kill me. 500 years ago, it would have done not today. Rejection doesn't kill you. In fact, it can be the best thing that ever happened to you. Many of our, the people that we really admire have been rejected, dumped, fired, but here they are bigger than ever. So the first thing you must do is decide to bounce back, to say things like, I'm resilient. Because one of the things that will give you grit is having the language of grit. Imagine you knew someone who had grit they were like a stick of rock, and if you split them in half, you'd see grit all the way through them. How do you think they talk? Do they say things like, oh my God, that rejection killed me. I died of embarrassment. It crushed me. It didn't work out. Or do they say, well, I learned something. Back I came. I bounced back. So imagine the language of someone who has grit, resilience, and determination. Imagine the language of someone who has the bounce back factor. Go out and get that bounce back factor yourself. The second thing about grit, and it is so important, and also actually quite easy once you know how, is people who have grit do not let in destructive criticism. Of course, they hear it, they don't let it in. They say, thank you for sharing that, your opinion. I happen to not agree with you. There is nothing that will build your self-esteem like praise and nothing that will wither it, diminish it and shrink it like criticism. And here's the thing to understand about people who want to criticize you. Critical people always have the most criticism for themselves. They just reflect out to you their own dissatisfaction. That's their choice. Here's your choice. You do not have to let it in. Not letting in destructive criticism changed my life. I've seen it change the life of so many of my clients. Constructive criticism, hey Marissa, I love you, but you're always late. Or, hey Marissa, I love you, but you talk too fast. I can learn from that, but destructive, I hate you. Who do you think you are? You don't know anything. I just don't let that in. You don't have to let it in. If you write a book, if you have a blog, if you're a speaker, if you're a coach, if you're working with people, somebody probably won't like you. And they may say something very critical. After all, we have a world of trolls now. They're anonymous and they go online and they say mean things. That's their choice. They're very unhappy. No one wakes up and goes, hey, oh, my life is so great. Who can I diminish today? Let me get out my computer, go onto YouTube and slam someone, diminish them. People who do that already diminish. That's their choice. Your choice is to go, wow, what kind of person is this that gets pleasure from diminishing other people? They feel unequal and a miserable person tries to make someone else more miserable and then they feel better. That's their choice. Your choice is not to let it in, to say things like, well, thank you for sharing. Sure, that's your opinion. I happen to not agree. I'm not quite sure where you're going with this or what you're trying to do here. But if you're trying to make me feel bad about myself, I can only tell you this right now. I'm not letting it in. When you 
take critical people on in a nice way. You're obviously very unhappy, you're clearly not a happy person, thanks for sharing. Not quite sure what the point of your criticism is, but let me tell you right now, I'm not going to let it in. It's not going to affect me. I'm going to leave it with you. See, if I tried to give you a gift today, I don't want the gift, I don't like that gift, then I've got the gift. If you won't accept a gift I'm giving you, it's left with me. And if you do not accept destructive criticism, it's left with the person who's trying to give it to you. Don't take it. Don't accept it. Leave it with them. Not letting in destructive criticism builds grit. And while you're not letting it in, do let in positive praise for yourself. One of my favorite things about developing grit is becoming your own cheerleader. Imagine you have a cheerleader in you that's banging a drum, clashing the cymbals, shouting your name, doing somersaults, doing cartwheels, going, hey, you've got this, you can do this. This has your name all over it. Yay you, go you, because cheerleaders cheer even when you're not winning. And when you become your own cheerleader and say today, I did something amazing today. I did something, I achieved something, I had patience, I came up with a great idea. Cheer yourself on, it will give you phenomenal grit. Here is a way that you will get super effective grit. Do not take no for an answer. See a delay as a delay, not a denial. When I was writing my first book, it got rejected and rejected and rejected. And every time I heard that thud hitting my floor, I'd hear the manuscript coming through the letterbox and my stomach would sink. It's like, ah, oh, that's a rejection. I literally put it back in an envelope and sent it back. J.K. Rowling did the same thing. Her work was rejected, sent it back. Rejected, sent it back. Celine Dion sent a tape out to a music company, called them and said, did you like my music? No, she said, you haven't played it. You couldn't hear my music and not love it. And they got it out, played it and signed her because she did not take in rejection. Do not take no for an answer. What one person says no to, the next person will say yes to. So you must hear a no and go, that's not a no, it's just a delay. No is often no right now, no at the moment, but try again later, come back later, take your product, take your idea, shape it, work on it. Do not take no for an answer. If you don't take no for an answer, you will be so resilient. And finally, to really have grit, I know I mentioned it before, but it's so important. You must have the language of grit. You must never say, I'm falling apart, I can't cope. Um, everything's going wrong, I'm losing my shit. Never say that. Say, I have an incredibility to cope. I'm strong, I'm forceful, I'm resilient, I'm determined. I don't take no for an answer. I have an inner cheerleader. It's called having a thick skin, but I don't really believe it's about a thick skin. It's about having the language and the habits of resilience. You make your habits and then your habits turn right around and make you. And the only thing that are holding you back are the wrong habits. You and I know that if you want anything, you must think about it, visualize it, and be proactive. If I want to buy a new house, I can't sit on my couch and I'm buying a new house. I'm buying, I've got to go out and look at them. I've got to read magazines, go and look at some houses, and really focus on manifesting the house of my dreams while going out and looking for it. If I want a new job. I'm going to have to maybe go and do some interviews and meet, but if I want to find a great love in my life, and there are a lot of people who do this, they sit at home and they try to manifest love without getting off the couch. So they go to like yoga and women's book clubs where there are no men and then they go, yeah, this manifesting doesn't work. And a lot of people don't like me saying, they're going to know you got it all wrong. If you believe it, it will happen without you doing anything at all. But I don't think that's true. If you are a manifester, if you visualize and manifest, and your manifest is, I'm going to go out and meet the partner of my dreams. It's all going to be amazing. And you meet someone, you go and talk to them, and they reject you. So, oh, no, it doesn't work. 
I tried that, it didn't work. You see, it doesn't mean you won't get rejected as a manifester. It means you have to go back and go back and go back. So I love manifesting. I do believe in the Bible, it says, as you think in your heart, you are. And I believe that you can manifest all kinds of things like health and wealth and love and joy and success. But I also believe that you have to take action. So if you got sick and you're manifesting for perfect health, you should take supplements and eat better and sleep better and look after yourself. If your relationship has gone wrong, you should go out and find a new one. So I hope that makes you see that you can manifest whatever you want, visualize it, see it, make a mood board. I love mood boards. You see, I made a mood board many years ago and I put on so many things, taking a hot air balloon ride across um, the River Nile in Egypt, getting engaged and getting a massive rock from a great guy, going on a cruise around the world, having my book in bestseller list. And I would cut out pictures of my book and put it on my mood board and go, this book is the bestseller. And so I did all of that. And I know Mark Victor Hansen, when he wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, would cut out the New York Times bestseller list, tip X out the number one and write his book in. But he also went out every day, every week. He went to meet bookstores and literary agents and people that would sell his book. Because you have to do both. Wayne Dyer, who is a master of manifestation, couldn't get his book published. He put it in the car. He went on the road for two years. He'd go to a radio station, talk about his book, and go, by the way, it's on sale at X bookstore down the road. Then he'd drive to the bookstore, get all the books out of the trunk of his car and persuade them to stock it. So he manifested and took action. He took action and he manifested. Manifesting without action can work, but it's not powerful enough. And taking action without manifesting can work too. Not powerful. When you do both, you are bulletproof. You are unstoppable. You are unshakable. So I manifested a great book, but I still had to write the book. And then when I wrote the book, I didn't know at the time what I know now might take you three months to write a book. But the work you have to do to keep that in the bestseller list, the articles you have to write, the radio shows you have to go on, who you have to talk to is much harder work. And my agent said, you know, if you want a book deal, you better be prepared to go on stage and talk about your book because anyone can write a book. Not anyone can get it published. And then not anyone can get it to stay in a bestseller chart. You've got to do a lot of work. I mean, I was on trains going to places all over the place. I was tired, but it wasn't enough to write that book. I had to write it then take action to get it published, then take action to make it a bestseller, then take action to keep it a bestseller. And the best manifestors work hard as well. So I hope you understand the law of attraction. You can attract love, you can attract wealth, you can attract joy, you can attract health, but you've got to do some work as well. I mean, I, I do yoga, I work out because I, I want to attract and keep a fit body. I'm sure I could probably lie on my couch and imagine having a six pack and firm thighs and a flat stomach, but I also do the work, but I like it. I like doing Pilates, I like doing yoga. And that's another thing to remember when you start to do something you don't wanna do like running or lifting weights or juicing or taking the sugar out of your coffee. After a while, you start to like it. We like what we do all the time. I'm going to end very quickly with the five things that you can do to make work a joy. Do what you love. If you try to make it in a career where you hate it, you'll always pay a price. If you do what you love and love what you do, it never really feels like hard work. Take action every single day in the direction of your goals. On your way to success, you have to take action every day. You know, sometimes the lift to success is broken, but the stairs, they always work. And there aren't always shortcuts. There can be. You have to do what you don't want to do. Ring people up and go, hey, could you write about my product? Could I come on your show? Would you give me a slot? Sometimes they go, no. You go, okay, thank you. And you just pick up the phone again. So you must do what you don't want to do. You must do it first. 
and you must believe in yourself and come back from rejection. Many phenomenal manifestors have been rejected and they come back and they come back. And success doesn't mean never hearing a no, never falling down. It's how quickly you get back up again. Success might come to you, but you better go to it. You see, if you wait for success to come to you, it can be a long wait. If you go to it, it's not a long wait. What you want wants you, and what you are moving towards is moving towards you. So use the law of attraction, manifest, but also do the work. Everything on my mood board came true, but I did a lot of work too. If you enjoyed that video, check out the next one right here. You can also click the link below right here for your free gift. The only thing you need to find love is a belief that you are lovable. Reprogram your subconscious mind for success. Remember, it has a job.